Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Mel Chadwick, I'm a freelance illustrator, artist, and today I wanted to share with you um, a really simple art tutorial on painting um, a feather with Copic markers. So let's jump in. This is what I'll be using today. So I've got Magic Colour, which is a liquid acrylic in earth brown and also in warm grey. And they are light fast and permanent. And then I'm going to use the dip pen to actually dip into those so that I can draw my feather outline. I'll also be using this liquid pencil and then also a white gel pen which I will use at the end to highlight bits of the feather. And so onto the Copic markers I will be using a cotton pearl, a soft sun, sand and then I'll be using also brown which from the lids actually looks more like an orange brown then also dark brown finally I will be using burnt umber Copic markers are actually really cool because they've got a chisel nib and a brush nib and what I'm doing now is just uh, painting the colours at the top of the page so that I remember what order I'm going to be um, painting my feather in. Copic markers are very similar to watercolour in that you go from light to dark um, and blend as you go along. So it's just handy to have that scale at the top. So we're going to just start now with the basic shape of a feather. I'm going to do this quite lightly in my mechanical pencil. You need to be exact but just give you a rough outline and then after that I will be using my nib dip pen to go over this outline. So I'm just squeezing um, some of the acrylic ink into my little leaf tray. Which we got at a car boot, actually, for I think 50p. Pretty impressed with that. Um, I've just combined the two colours because I want it too brown and I didn't want it too light grey. So together that makes quite a nice colour mix. I'm just testing that colour at the top to make sure I've got it right. And then what I'm going to do now is just go over my pencil marks and line drawing. You can also do this with a fine liner. I have a range of colours so you can get browns and greys. But as I have a dip pen, I just thought I would use that. It feels quite old school. But I quite like that. So you can add a few more details like I'm doing here or you can just leave it plain and let your markers um, do the work. I quite like adding details. Okay, we're going to start now with the lightest of the Copic markers, so that would be the Soft Sun. And what you So with the brush nib end, just have a sweeping action as you um, apply the marker to your feather. Just carefully um, colour in the area of the feather that you've got and you imagine where the light might land on the feather and just leave that white. I'm pressing fairly lightly to the paper and kind of just making very quick sweeping motions with the pen to kind of imitate the way a feather would look. So I'm now going over that first layer with the second colour in our scale and so that colour is cotton pearl. As you can see I'm just following again exactly what I did with the first pen but going over it in, with the darker colour. You'll find that it starts to kind of bleed into the other colour which is kind of what we want. We want it to blend quite nicely um, and just build up the, the colour as we go along. Again creeping that sweeping motion just to give the emphasis of the feather-like feel. 
I'm now going to move on to the next one, which is sandy colour, again slightly darker. And again, I'm just going to go around the piece, like I did with the other colours. And again, keep using the sweeping action, so it starts to look like a feather texture. Basically, you're using like a feathery movement. <laughs> quite hard to describe but I hopefully you can see what I mean. Don't worry too much if it isn't blending too well. We will be able to go back over this and you'll see that it will blend. Oh and by the way the paper that I'm using is a Bristol board. It's smooth um, and it's quite thick. I would recommend probably using anything upwards of 160 up to 200 GSM. Um, but you can also buy a special blending card which you can use with your Copic markers especially if you really get into using them and you want to create some final art with them then that's the thing to use however if you've got any kind of uh, cartridge thick paper then I recommend just giving it a try and try seeing what works Obviously, if it's quite thin, the ink's going to just be absorbed and bleed a lot more. You really want to have paper that doesn't bleed, which is why the Bristol board smooth is actually quite nice to work on. Picked up the lighter marker and then just gone back over what I've just created. And what that does is it blends in all of those colours together, which makes it a lot smoother and it has a really nice finish to it. So the next colour I'm using is that nice kind of orangey brown. Um, it's very quite bright and has a big contrast actually with the other colours. Um, sometimes it can feel like you can feel a bit nervous adding such a bright colour, but actually it um, will actually give your piece a really good finish and stand out. So don't be afraid to try contrasting colours or high contrast colours because it will really make your work um, come to life. So once you've done that brighter colour again go back in with the lighter colour sand I'm using to go back in. You could also go back in with one of the lighter colours like the soft sun but this is again just to blend in those colours together so that they sit nicely together and, and work well. So now I'm just going to go in with the dark brown. Um, I'm tending to gradiate the whole of the feather anyway, so I'm keeping up now to the top third of the feather with that brown. But I will bring some of it, I think, down just to blend in. But as you can see, I'm still using that sweeping action. Helps to uh, really light eyes that texture. So I'll go back in with the or orangey brown the brown to really blend that back in. So whilst I'm blending I just wanted to let you know where I got my Copic markers from. Um, I actually got them on eBay um, which is really cost effective because if you've done any amount of research you'll probably realise that Copic markers can be quite expensive especially if you want to um, own quite a lot of them and I know a lot of people tend to do that because you know you've got 322 colours to choose from um, and it's quite hard you know as an artist to actually just choose you know a handful <laughs> but um, yeah eBay is a good place to get them from these uh, markers are part of the Chow range which actually is at a lower price point um, but the thing with all of the Copa markers is that they are refillable and that's really good because it means that even if you buy them secondhand, they can still be used. So I would recommend looking on eBay if you if you know price is a problem. Uh, you just want to try them out and see how you get on with them. And you know, if you just choose like say these six colours, then again you can see that you can create something from it that you can work out if you want to extend your range. And they can be used for a wide variety of different kind of drawings, not just, uh, you know, feathers, but also use them for lettering. 
and that's something that I would probably like to explore a bit further. So yeah, it's pretty, they're pretty versatile and I'm, I'm only just getting used to them, but I can already see there's a lot of applications for them. I'm making some dots on my um, feather just to bring out a different texture, make it look a bit more interesting. And you see I'm using both the burnt ember and the brown to do that. Um, so we have a different kind of colour. And now I am going to be using the gel pen. Now this is something you can choose to use or not, you don't have to, but I, I like using the gel pen just because it's highlights um, of the feather. I think it works really well and because the gel pen isn't really, really opaque, it means that it looks even more like a feather texture. Also gel pens, this one anyway, I don't think it was expensive at all. I think it was like a pound fifty or something. Yeah, and it just, I think, adds to the overall feather coming alive. So I'm going to be applying that to both sides of the feather. Feel like it's got quite a 3D quality to it. I think it's quite impressive with a marker. And there we go. A feather made with Copic markers. I'd love to see what you create guys with your Copic markers and I really hope, hope this mini tutorial was helpful for you and an introduction to using Copic markers. Thanks guys for watching. I hope this was a helpful introduction to using Copic markers. And remember, if you enjoyed this, please like, give it a thumbs up, and also please subscribe below. And it'll be great to hear any of your comments in the comment section below. Bye.